Hi guys, thanks for attending our talk. We are going to talk about biometric system hacking in the age of smart vehicle. So who are we? I'm Kevin2600, and this is my teammate, Wesley. Say hi. And we're security researchers from Star V Lab. We have researched and found many interesting vehicle-related bugs and presented some of them at a various uh, conference in the past few years. And if anyone wonder what car hackers labs looks like, and here are some pictures for you, um, just like any other labs, we got lots of interesting equipment, and most importantly, we got actual cars to, to play with. Okay, so here are the contents for today's talk. We're going to talk about biometric authentication and face recognition spoofing, and eventually speaker recognition spoofing for the vehicle. And so, okay, biometrics authentication. And now this is a definition of multi-factor authentication. Basically, you will need two or more factors like something you are, something you have, something you know to achieve authentication. Now, someone, uh, something you have. So usually this means our key fobs for the car. And the key fob is a very common device we have for the vehicle. And in the recent time, some car companies start to replace the physical key fobs with the NFC card or just a mobile phone for accessing our car. As you can see, um, the iPhone now have a capability to unlock the BMW uh, straight away. Now, for example, this is the key fob system for Tesla. In the beginning, Tesla only provided the NFC card and the mobile app to access a vehicle. Later, Tesla has provided the physical key fobs, but it's still based on the BLE and NFC. Okay, and something you know. Interestingly, some car company like Ford uh, provided a feature that we can unlock the car door with a pin code. So this is something we need to remember and know, right? Um, something you are. Oh, again, some model of Ford not only use pin codes to unlock the car door, it has also provided a fingerprint reader. That means we can point our finger at it and unlock the car. And some company use face ID for access to the vehicle has become a new trend too. As you can see, uh, this one um, is actually implements a face ID in a B pedal. pedal so we can um, unlock our car door with our face. Also, the car companies like BMW and Hanta prefer to use our human voice prints and integrate with a smart speaker to control cars. So we can say, Alexa, unlock our car in the future. Uh, now let's move on. How do we do a speaker recognition spoofing? So this is a definition of speaker recognition. It is the uh, identification of a person from characteristics for a voice, and it can be used to authenticate or verify the identity of a speaker as part of a security process. Um, the development history of speaker recognition can be traced back all the way to uh, 60s. So the speaker recognition algorithm has started with the template matching and then moved on to probability model like GNM, GNM, UBM, and the feature classification D vectors and X vector and so on. So the speaker recognition system uh, generally consists of uh, two categories like feature extraction and a feature matching. So in reality, the extracted feature are matched with the feature of people who registered in the database. And the identity is determined um, based on the similarity of the two features. So for the content uh, to be recognized, the speaker recognition system is generally divided into three categories. Uh, the first one is the fixed vocabulary recognition. It means voice print 
recognition through fixed uh, vocabulary such as hey theory and second uh, is uh, fixed voice plus random content uh, recognition it means fixed and random content combined together such as hey bob uh, to 600 and then the two 600 is generated randomly by the system itself and finally the random content recognition that means an entire phrase is generated randomly by the system so as you can see the speaker recognition system are already everywhere from access control system to the voice assistant in a car. <clears throat> but what could uh, possibly go wrong then? Here we listed uh, some of the most uh, common spoofing methods for speaker recognition. The easiest one uh, is called an uh, impersonation attack. The attacker tries to impersonate the victims speaking turn uh, to deceive the uh, target system but this attack can be easily detected by the speaker recognition system and there are more effective and advanced attacks called the replay attack speaker sentences voice conversion and uh, adversarial example attack. We are going to talk about uh, those attacks in more uh, detail later. Now, let's take a look at the replay attack. It is mainly aimed at the system of fixed sentence verification. We can use the recording device to record the fixed sentence of the victims and replay the recorded sentence during verification to deceive the speaker vaccination system. As we can see uh, from a male spectrogram, uh, the similarity from a played voice compared to genuine voice is high. That is why the replay attack is very simple yet very effective attack. However, a simple method may not pass the speaker authentication system with the voice anti spoofing Now, let's uh, now let's see some demos. There are already plenty of third-party apps uh, can control smart cars like Tesla using Siri. This is the video demo for the replay attack on Siri. And uh, because some of action like unlock the drawer uh, need uh, an authentication like pin codes. For this app, we can only open the chat pool with it. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. However, we have found at least one app that doesn't need uh, extra authentication and we can unlock the Tesla very easily. Hi Siri. Hi Siri. Hi Siri. Hi Siri.
Now let's take a look at the speech sentences. Text to speech. A grader. Let's take Google's SV2TTS as an example. The entire speech sentences can be divided into three parts. The speaker encoder module is responsible for extracting speaker features from short sentence. The synthesizer module is responsible for combining the speaker feature with text to generate a male spectrogram that integrates the specified speaker features into the speech corresponding to the specified text. Uh, the vocoder measure is responsible for generating voice data, data with male spectrogram, which is the audio uh, data we use for TTS attack. And uh, for the speech synthesis experiment, we use the, the software are uh, called the monkey board and uh, real time voice cloning. It is based on algorithm SV2 TTS, which open sourced by Google. In perfect situation, it can clone a voice in just five seconds to generate arbitrary speech in a real, real time. And uh, this is the demos for the speech synthesis attack. The first demo is to attack the Baidu smart speaker. The Baidu smart speaker has audio anti-spoofing enabled, but we can uh, use uh, TTS to spoof it and uh, impersonate as other people. Xiaodu, Xiaodu. Yan, the second demo is to attack the Timo speaker. Well, it can also be spoofed by TTS attack. We can go even further by impersonate someone else to purchase something online. Hello, 天猫精灵
adversarial example attack means a attacker has intentionally designed to cut the machine learning model to make a mistake. For speaker recognition spoofing attack, the main goal is to attack the speaker recognition algorithm by adding some perturbation that have been calculated to the switch data to make the switch be recognized as a genuine victim to receive the authentication system. This is a white book environment for switch vaccination spoofing attack on uh, an open source project called the Deep Switch. We first play a genuine recording. And uh, it can be recognized successfully. Someone to remember. Then we created a graphic recording. And the speech and it is different. That means our attack is success. So let's summarize our spoofing methods for speaker recognition. As we can see, the fixed vocabulary is the easiest one to attack. A simple replay will work just fine. And for the Render contents, we still can use switch synthesis or the adversarial example to attack. Okay, so um, so now it's time to move on the facial recognition spoof. And um, the facial recognition um, is a technology capable to matching a human face from a digital uh, image or a video frame against the database of faces. Um, usually it can be to use a syndicate user through ID verification servers. And the facial recognition technology is constantly evolving. It was based on a low dimension characterization and nowadays it, it has uh, involved the three dimension face recognition. And there are already many applications implemented uh, the face recognition. So for example, the face ID for unlock our mobile phone and boarding the plane in the airport. Uh, now recently, the car company has started to use face recognition technology for driver monitor system and also use the face ID for driver profile to improve the driving uh, experience. And of course, use the human face to authenticate the owner of the vehicle is actually become uh, indeed a very convenient way and become a trend. And here are the four stages of the face recognition uh, procedure. So first um, is the face detection. So the system need to know if there's a human face or a cat face, right? And second is a liveness detection, AKA face anti-spoofing. At this stage, uh, it, it actually play a very important role uh, in the face of recognition procedure. And third and fourth is the feature extraction and the feature matching. At this stage, the system will try to match the face features from the database. Okay. And let's take a close look at the face recognition procedure, but this time at without anti-space, uh, anti-face spoofing. So first, the input data is the image. Um, the system need to determine whether it's a human face or not, right? 
Once the system spot the human face, it will try to extract the feature of this human face. And at this final step, the system will match the face features and to see if it's actually in the database. Okay, now let's talk about more about the face anti spoofing. As we just mentioned, this is a very important stage, right? Uh, usually, we need to do some action like uh, uh, like open mouth or shake our head for Citan to see whether the human face presented is real, real human being or just a piece of paper. Um, in addition, the system can also do a silent face anti spoofing, which no human action required. Uh, it would determine based on things like a human skin texture and different frequency of moving and so on. All right. So um, this is the face recognition structure. From the diagram, uh, we can see there are many uh, um, many uh, entry points to attack. So for example, later in the talk, we are going to share more uh, real life cases such as trash, trash hold uh, value and uh, the feature value attack. Um, so what could possibly go wrong? So here we have listed uh, six most common methods to spoof the face recognition system. For example, the photo attack and the more advanced attack like uh, adversarial example attack. And we're going to talk about more of this, um, this uh, attack in, in the details next. So, right, face photo attack. As we can see, we can actually print the victim's photo on piece of paper. And you see, it's very easy to, to do. And even kids can do it, right? You can see they are very happy when it wants the uh, attack is success. And now this is what we call a uh, missed orange attack. Basically, we draw a human face on an orange um, in order to test the target system face detection function. And as we mentioned, the human face detection is the first stage of every face recognition system. Simply draw a human face on, a, on an orange uh, will easily spoof the face recognition system at this stage. So when the system does not have a good face anti-spoofing mechanism, and it will, then the trick will work. So our first target is the smart lock from Xiaomi. As we can see from uh, the way the recording, let's, let me just play with play. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, um, the system not only detecting uh, this is a human, but also even think this is a 24 years old man, right? So we also test the Xiaomi lock with the face photo attack and, and also the adversarial example attack. All, as we can see, every trick actually work. Uh, the picture from the left is the real human victim and Xiaomi lock has detected this correctly, which is fine. But and then when we present a pa uh, piece of paper with a photo on it, it also work. And, and also the uh, adversarial sample mask works. So yeah, uh, the Xiaomi locks is now very good in, uh, for this. Now, but this type attack can be prevented because uh, um, more advanced camera system, you will come with the infrared camera. And this is what it looks like from official uh, recognition system point of view. As we can see, if we actually present a human face photo or video on a mobile to the infrared camera, you can see this is um, on a mobile, if we play a video, um, it's actually, uh, it sees nothing at all, right? So usually we need to do some action like open our mouth and shake head. head um, so for a system to determine if it's a real human being. Um, but what we can do is to actually cut a, a hole in the eyes area or mouse area to bypass such detection. And we even can buy a customizing face sculpture um, from to, in order to bypass this system, which lacks detection for human skin skin texture. So let me uh, play a uh, uh, the video. Let's see. Um, So, so yeah, I was going to wear a funny <laughs> sculpture. <laughs> right, <laughs> a little bit uh, scary, right? <laughs> 
Oh yeah, but this 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 tech actually uh, we tested on a Huawei P30 Pro. See, as you can see, we we actually log in straight away, very quick, no problem. Right? Okay. As we mentioned early on, the principle of adversarial example attack is a attacker has intentionally designed to cut the machine learning model to make a mistake. As we can see, when we added a small perturbation to the panda picture, the machine learning model will have 99.3% confidence to think it is a given uh, inside, inside. And uh, this is a class, classic adversarial example attack. And uh, based on various characteristics, Adversarial examples can be divided into three different attack methods, such as with or without target, white box or black box attack, and one step or multi step attack. We mainly Use the black box adversarial example attack method for testing the transferability of adversarial examples is guaranteed by joint training of multiple models. The normal model training process is to train the parameters of the model on a fixed data set. The adversarial uh, simple is training the simple under the condition of fixed uh, parameters, which continuously makes the output of the model close to our expectations. Perturbation area suggestion has a big impact on the attack result. We can edit perturbation in different area on the face, but based on research article from Tsinghua University, the perturbation Area within the eyes and nose has the highest has success rate. So once we made a we present to some online ID operator for testing. One interesting fact is even we use the same mask because the face skin and shape are different. One person may have more success rate than the others. As left picture shows only 73% similarity and the picture on the right have 89%. Okay, this is a video demo for the adversarial example attack on Huawei P30 Pro uh, Face ID login system. So, yeah, it works for the real person. And then we, without a mask, we cannot log in successfully. So we now wear the actual mask. Ah, it works. 
right? It's very, very effective. And this is a video demo for a, for an adversarial example attack on Wima vehicle face ID system. Oops, sorry. So you can see it doesn't work at the first time, but then we'll try again um, with the uh, mask on. Let's try again. It works. Yeah. And this is another uh, video demo. The, the, the target is a car which we cannot disclose the name. But this car actually allow us to turn on the engine and drive off uh, if we bypass the face ID system. So um, all we can do is the same same thing. We wear the uh, modify the mask and present to the to the camera, and eventually we are able to log in successfully, which means we are able to um, turn on the engine and, and drive off the car. So yeah. Now, uh, we have a clear idea of the principle of the adversarial attack uh, is we can add a small perturbation to cause the machine learning model to actually make a mistake. And during the research, we have found by putting the target face image on the attacker's face, um, it can cover attack face partially. Uh, we can deceive some of uh, face recognition system with a higher successful rate. And this, this is actually a common limitation for the 2D face recognition system. And so this is a video demo for the feature replaced attack. As you can see, we saw we're on the actual face mask. Uh, we're not able to log in uh, to the Xiaomi Note 9. But let me try again with the mask on. Straight away. Yeah, it works. And this is uh, not just for Xiaomi. We also test uh, on like OnePlus and other uh, model of the mobile phone. It also works. So, well, of course, if when system set Lulu very secure, uh, like very high threshold value, uh, we won't able to bypass easily. And uh, this is a, a face ID system for a banking system which we were actually failed to get in. Uh, but I think it's good for them, right? And then for us as well. So the threshold value, and this is a car we were pen tested before, but again, we cannot uh, discuss the name yet, but the most important thing is, uh, this car is like a, uh, a lot of other smart cars, like it has an Android based uh, IVI system. So which we are able to get in to the engineer mode. Once we are into the engineer mode, we're, we're, we were able to enable ADB connection from there. So once we got ADB cell, we uh, actually a route straight away. So what would you do uh, when you get a route on AVI? Right. Maybe, uh, let's see. Yeah, replace the new screen picture, right? So, and this car also got a face ID function. However, the anti-face spoofing is, is very good. So we cannot spoof it with the trick we were just mentioned above, but we are root on the system, remember? Um, turns out the threshold value configure, configuration file is actually stored locally on, on IVI. So we can actually modify it to a very low value to bypass it. And here is the video demo for the attack. So let's see. On um, first, we saw the modif modify the threshold value. Um, you can see you, you won't work. We, we're not able to log in. So again, and still failed, right? So, and let's do some mu uh, magic. Uh, the magic is to actually change the uh, threshold value into very low like point zero or something, <laughs> right? So, and in order for this trick work, we need also, once we configure a file, we need to save it and reboot the IVI. 
So that's what we're doing right now. So once the system uh, rebooted, um, we can try it again, see if we can get in. So yeah, now let's try again. Yeah, without doubt, we should be able to log in now. You can see, see the system is kind of like fighting, fighting, and then yeah, we are in. Cool. Um, similarly, the listeners of this ID system we have come across before during during uh, another pen test ops. Now, and this system has two human face features uh, stored in the database. Um, once we got root in the system, we can actually replace one feature for our own, and the system will only verify like any one of them for logging in order for logging in to successfully, meaning we are now can log in as victims and victim still able to log in as himself. So nobody even will know that we were there before. So now, extra function attack. Now this is an interesting um, Imagine what if we cannot get a cell on a target and the rules for the face ID is so tight and are we out of option yet? Let's take a look. Yeah, see, a simple RF replay attack will also work because the, the access control system usually have multiple features enabled. And turns out this one, our target has also open, can be opened by a fixed code radio remote controller. Um, just like people said, it's not a bug, it's a feature. So, okay, so let's do a summary for some of the technique we had just seen so far. For the face detection, it can spoof by uh, Mr. Orange attack, face photo attack, and a face uh, sculpture attack. And for the face anti spoofing, on uh, a feature replace attack and the adversarial example attack will work. And for the feature matching, feature value attack, threshold chain, feature value attack, threshold value attack is the trick we can always try. And in the end, let's not forget extra function attack. Okay, here are some uh, references. Uh, if any, for anyone who would like to know more, uh, you can always uh, to check them out. As you can see, we need to do a lot of readings, right? Research for, for, for this area. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye.